Around 50 European leaders, including Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and NATO Secretary General Mark Ruta, will be reassessing their transatlantic relations in the hope that the Donald Trump's second U.S. presidency will avoid the strife and political pitfalls of his first administration. Arriving for a summit of European leaders in the Hungarian capital, Budapest, Ruta said he was looking forward to working with Trump again. When he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2% this is very much his doing, his success, he told reporters. He said a major topic at the summit would be the prospect of Russia, North Korea, Iran, China working together. We have to work not only the threat of Russia but also the fact that these four countries work together, he said, which would pose a threat to Europe and the US. Further compounding an already complicated situation, Germany, Europe's troubled economic juggernaut, sank into political crisis. After German Chancellor Olaf Scholz fired his finance minister. It raises the specter of elections in a few months and yet another standoff between the emboldened hard right and the establishment parties in Europe. Ruta said he had confidence in Scholz and Germany's role on the world stage. He said his main concern was the impact of North Korean troops in Russia who he said were deployed in return for Russia supplying North Korea with the newest technological developments. Russia is delivering the latest technology into North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against Ukraine and that is a threat not only to the European part of NATO but also to the US mainland, he said. At the summit Zelensky is expected to make another plea for more aid as his country fends off Moscow's invasion. The timing is laden with significance as Trump has vowed to end the war, within 24 hours, of being elected something leaders in Kiev interpret as an impending evaporation of U.S. support. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Of course, uh, I want to congratulate again uh, President Trump uh, upon his re-election. Uh, it was really uh, a huge success for him, including capturing the House and the Senate. I look forward to work with him again. Uh, when he was president, he was the one in NATO who stimulated us to move over the 2%. And now, also thanks to him, uh, NATO, if you take out the numbers of the US for a moment, is above the 2%. And I think very much that is his doing, his success, and we need to do more. We know this. Um, today, very much on my mind, in this meeting, is what is happening now with North Koreans being deployed in Russia. And what we see more and more is that North Korea, Iran, uh, China, and of course Russia are working together. Um, working together against Ukraine. But at the same time, Russia has to pay for this. And one of the things they are doing is delivering technology to North Korea, which is now threatening uh, in the future, the mainland of the US, uh, continental Europe, uh, but also our partners in the Indo-Pacific, uh, Japan for example, and the Republic of Korea. I'm sure that when it comes to defense, when it comes to um, foreign policy, uh, that Germany will be able to conduct uh, his, its foreign policy. Uh, fulfill its obligations in terms of defense, etc. So I'm not worried about that. Olaf Scholz is a strong leader. I know him very well. So I think he will navigate during the coming months, making sure that uh, Germany plays its role at the world stage. Thank you. We have to work not only uh, the threat of Russia, uh, but also the fact that these four countries work together and that now uh, very soon we will see that also the US itself is under threat from these newest technological developments, thanks to Russia giving its um, latest insights and technology to the North Korea. Russia is delivering the latest technology uh, into uh, North Korea in return for North Korean help with the war against uh, Ukraine. And this is a threat not only to the European part of NATO, but also to the US mainland. And that means that the Indo-Pacific and the Euro-Atlantic 
but particularly also within NATO, US, Canada and the European part of NATO. We have to work together. He's right The Russian 20th Motor Rifle Division is conducting a major offensive against Ukrainian positions in Donetsk Oblast, despite suffering significant vehicle losses, according to Forbes. The situation in the Pokrovsk direction of the front in Ukraine is increasingly precarious as Russian forces intensify their offensive operations. As of early October 2024, Russian troops are reported to be within 5 to 7 kilometers of Pokrovsk, a crucial logistical hub for Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces have been engaged in counter-battery fire and are attempting to hold critical positions to prevent further Russian encroachment. Ukrainian 79th Air Assault Brigade, numbering approximately 2,000 personnel, faces pressure from the larger Russian division estimated at 10,000 troops in what appears to be a strategic push to encircle Kurokov, Donetsk Oblast. According to Ukrainian drone operator Kriegsforsha, the situation has become close to critical for the defending forces, Forbes reports. However, Ukrainian forces have destroyed numerous Russian vehicles, including modern BMP-3s and older BMP-2s and MTLBs. Russian losses reached 206 vehicles in a single day, compared to 49 Ukrainian vehicles lost. The Ukrainian military faces additional challenges with its forces, divided between the Donetsk front and a 270-mile salient in Russia's Kursk Oblast. Kriegsforsha questions this strategic allocation of resources, stating, while we lose so much ground in the Donetsk area, I am asking myself, what am I doing in the Kursk area? The Ukrainian Defense Ministry is working to establish new brigades to reinforce the front line. However, these units are still in training, and equipment shortages remain a significant challenge for newly formed units. The situation in the Pokrovsk direction remains tough. At the end of October, Russian forces began assault operations, mobilizing large reserves toward the town of Selidov. Russian forces are shelling with various calibers of artillery, actively using electronic warfare systems and attempting to employ armored vehicles. In the Pokrovsk direction, Russian forces are employing large numbers of personnel and frequently using mass infantry assault tactics. Pokrovsk is strategically important and offers logistical advantages.